There is a TV show on the ABC called Question Everything. It's a fairly recent show, but it's the kind of show I love because it tries to unpick uh, some of the spin and false information which is out there, some of the pretty rational and wayward thinking uh, that seems to populate so much of our, our airwaves and certainly the internet. Sometimes, though, sometimes these shows, uh, these kind of analytical uh, approaches to the world can be a bit depressing because the sheer weight of misinformation and manipulation out there seems to overwhelm us. So even like, though I like watching shows like this, I sometimes walk away a little depressed. But there was an interesting clip the other night which illustrated that even though there is a whole bunch of nonsense out there in the public space and in the, the clip, clip we we're going to watch in a minute, uh, it's all about anti-vax and the false information which is out there on the internet. Even though there's a whole bunch of false information, it is actually dominated by a surprisingly small number of people. Let's watch the clip now. Now, there's a lot to that clip, and it could be a bit depressing, and it's important to note that some of those so-called experts are not experts in any field uh, that has anything to do with the virus or immunology or vaccines. But there was also a, a positive part to that clip. A and the positive and hopeful part of that clip is that if there is only 12 people dominating a huge amount of the damaging information out there, if there's 12 people who are, who are giving rise to all that fear-mongering nonsense, it may be, it could be, that it might only take a few other people spreading truth and joy and hope to combat this nonsense, if it's done right, if it's done right. If there's something that Christians should be on board with, it is that finding new and creative ways to shine light on truth and spread joy in the world is our core business. It is our core business to shine light, speak truth and spread joy. And so when we look at Jesus' words again in the Sermon on the Mount, we are able to ask each other, where is the natural world amazing and wonderful? Or going deeper, how can our experience of the natural world help us to live lives which are free from some of the damaging demands of modern life? How can being creatures in God's great creation help us move beyond our, our desperate need to plan and organise and control? How can God's good creation and our life within it free us from social expectation around what is the proper way to li live? How can we live more joyful lives instead? There is even words in Jesus' Sermon on the Mount about being free from social expectations around what we wear. I'm not entirely sure Jesus would have loved the modern fashion industry. And all of this, all of this truth, all of this, this wonderful insight fits within an overarching truth, the overarching noddle, knowledge that should, should, should rest deep in our bones. And that truth is that God is trustworthy and God is faithful and God has our best interests at heart. And that just like the rest of creation, those birds and those flowers, our lives will involve suffering and bad stuff will happen. But that never means that we can't live good lives of joy and truthfulness and hope. Even though bad stuff will happen, we can still live wonderful lives. My goodness, isn't that a liberating and empowering message? So let us get into the practice of acknowledging and practicing gratitude and speaking truth each day, especially in the good times, so that when the bad times come, we know what we're doing. And let us take heart in the knowledge that even though a few voices for despair can be immensely powerful, so too can a few voices for hope. Let us find ways to let our light shine, even if it takes a bit of risk, because the world so desperately needs to see that the light does shine and the darkness can never overwhelm it.